that up? Is it? Okay, it's live. It has a little dragon and a blue. Can, you, see, can you see who's live in the trash? Yeah, I can see the dragon. The, yep. This is what I'm seeing. Cool. I'm just trying to see. I'm logging in for a live chat now so I can see. Yeah, so just let me know and then I'll, okay. I'll get started. I'll start by getting everyone's name since this is a small group in person. Hi. I'm Kelly Crowninger. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. What department are you in? So I work in Center for Scholar Development. Okay. Part of the Honors College. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I know fellowship has five Oh, nice. Cool. Yep. And what's your name? Hi, my name's Lee. Okay. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm in the Department of Biology. Oh, cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm.
Welcome, thanks for coming to this session on civic engagement. My name is Janelle Johnson. I currently work as the Assistant Director of Strategic Initiatives in the Lindy Center for Civic Engagement. Um, and through that, one of my primary job responsibilities is to um, launch, was to launch and now to manage the Dragon Volunteers Program. Um, I'm assuming all of you have heard about the Dragon Volunteers Program. That's why you're here. Cool, but I'd love to share more information on this program. So thanks again for your time today. So the purpose of the Dragon Volunteer Program is to connect our Drexel employees to community service opportunities offered within the greater Philadelphia neighborhood. Um, in President Fry's convocation speech a few years ago, he stated that Drexel is committed to becoming the most civically engaged university in the nation. Um, so as you know, that doesn't just pertain to students, but it also pertains to faculty and staff. So for that reason, we've worked with um, Human Resources to launch our civic engagement time policy, which allows all employees, all full-time employees, to receive 16 hours of paid time while to volunteer within their community. This is a snapshot of some of our volunteers, specifically from IA. I'm volunteering at our local community dinner um, that's at the Zorn Site Center, but I'll share some more information on that in, the, in another slide. So a little bit more information on the policy. I also would like to shout out my colleague, Kevin Rogers, who um, is here to answer any HR specific questions, but he's a big advocate of the program as well too. So yeah, so to get into the policy, um, civic engagement time is awarded to all full-time employees, and you get approximately 16 um, hours of paid time off to volunteer at a Drexel vetted community service site. Um, this, this time also expires in July 1st, so it doesn't roll over into the new year. Um, or into like the, the next fiscal year. So I definitely would encourage all of you to use up your time as much as you possibly can. Um, and additionally, if you're interested in learning more about some of the volunteer sites available, you can feel free to visit Career Pathway, and it has a snapshot of various um, opportunities and slots that you can sign up for. Did you know that to date, approximately 200 employees have um, volunteered through Dragon Volunteers? And through this, we were able to measure our collective impact within the community. And we noted that um, approximately six, 600 hours of community service has been invested into our surrounding community of Greater Philadelphia. So thankfully, employees such as yourselves have been very interested in the program and have gotten up out of their seats at work and decided to roll up their sleeves and go out into the community and volunteer with some of our sites. And a lot of our community partners have been extremely grateful for that opportunity. And you know, they had the opportunity to learn as well too more about some of Drexel's um, initiatives and, and goals um, within the community engagement sector of our university. Why volunteer? Are there any reasons why you both may be interested in volunteering? I'll put you on the spot to make it more interactive. Uh, yeah, to learn more about the local community mm -hmm. and issues within it. Yep. What about yourself? Are there any specific reasons why you're interested in volunteering? Yeah, do something to service the community. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. So you guys basically answered all of the questions of why to volunteer. But a lot of studies have stated that um, people are interested in um, volunteering because it boosts employee morale within their university or within their department. You're able to learn new skills that you probably may not be able to learn if you're in your desk and you know behind a computer 24-7. You also have the opportunity of meeting people from diverse backgrounds um, within the greater, greater Philadelphia area. As you know, Philadelphia is a melting pot. So when you do volunteer with some of our partners, you have the opportunity of meeting people from various um, socioeconomic backgrounds, to age, to class, to gender, and all of that other good stuff. So it definitely provides you with an opportunity to meet people um, in different settings. Um, additionally, volunteering, as you mentioned, allows you to be connected to Drexel's community engagement initiatives. Um, I'm not sure if you've know if you've heard about the University Community Partnerships Division, but this is a division that's um, the head of this division is Lucy Kerman, and she works to um, ensure that Drexel is having a good relationship with the community. So um, we do understand that Drexel is considered an economic anchor in the community. But as an economic anchor, we believe that it's our responsibility to give back and to work alongside our community partners and ensure that we have a good relationship with them where it is reciprocal. So we're investing into the community. And the community is also investing into us as well, too. So we definitely view um, volunteering, specifically the Dragon Volunteer Program, as a program that allows um, the community members, uh, 
Drexel community to go out into the community and learn alongside um, community partners as well too. Additionally, volunteering promotes work-life balance. I was really excited when um, the policy was created for this program because it allows employees to get up out of their work or get up out of their office and um, actually like get into the community and, and learn more about our initiatives. And it promotes work-life balance. Um, yes, I'm, I believe in the power of hard work and being dedicated to your job, but I also believe that in the importance of balancing what you do. And if Trexel's offering 16 hours of paid time off to volunteer, I think everyone, all 5,000 plus employees, <laughs> ideally, full-time, right, Kevin? Full-time? Yes. yes. Should participate in this program um, to promote that as well, too. Additionally, volunteering is fun. Um, I had the opportunity of volunteering with MANA and Broad Street Ministries and um, the Salvation Army, and I had a really good time like being able to sit and learn one-on-one um, -on -one from some of our community leaders on the work that they're doing, on the issues that they may be facing in our community. And then I also get emails um, from the community partners telling me how grateful they are to have Drexel employees, um, specifically seasoned um, employees as well, too, um, to help them to support some of their initiatives. Um, some of the sites that we've selected um, have been in conjunction with some of the student volunteer sites. So um, a lot of our community partners, although they do enjoy getting our lovely Drexel students who volunteer and who are always eager to learn more about what's going on in the community, they really do enjoy getting um, employees to, who would like to volunteer because they have like they are able to offer like a new sense like different sense of like insight onto what's going on and they tend to be a little bit more responsible that's the feedback that i've gotten so far so yeah these are some reasons on why you should volunteer so the, this is a snapshot of our, <coughs> some of our volunteer opportunities that we've offered um this past year so most recently, our lovely crew from the Dorsife Center volunteered at the Morton McMichael School to assist with the renovation project. So through that, they had the opportunity of painting some of the hallways, cleaning up the libraries, and really ensuring that our local um, students within the that's, that goes to a school within the Manchu neighborhood are able to go to a school and like that has like a clean environment that's really vibrant and. Um, decorated, I believe that they painted it in Drexel's colors. So this is one of our schools and it's also located in the Promise Zone. Habitat for Humanity is another popular drag and volunteer site. Um, they really do well with groups and essentially volunteers would go to Habitat for Humanity Restore to help um, to resell some of the, um, the items that were donated to them, whether it be from Home Depot or Lowe's. And they're able to um, resell it at a lower price. So basically, um, employees or volunteers would help um, customers um, with their purchases. They would help them to price some of the items and also help them to get it out to their car and promote the awesome mission of Habitat for Humanity. Another site is MANA. This is actually one of our most popular sites. Um, they offer volunteer opportunities almost every day. They love dragon volunteers. And I personally love um, volunteering at MANA because um, I, every time I go there, I learn a new recipe. <laughs> the last time I went there, I was in the kitchen um, basically helping them to prep food that would ultimately be distributed to people who are faced with a terminal illness and may not have access to getting a really nice and hot meal. So I really love MANA. It's always a vibrant community. Um, the chefs are awesome. The staff is awesome. And it's also located right in the art museum area, so it's not too far. So this is definitely one of my favorite sites, and we have, as I said before, we have volunteer opportunities for MANA almost every day on Career Pathway, and they're very, very, very good with groups as well, too. Another great site is Broad Street Ministries. Um, through this opportunity, th this opportunity is primarily really good with groups um, because they're such a popular community partner. Essentially, you would have to book a volunteer opportunity at least a couple months in advance. Um, through the Hospitality Collaborative, um, Broad Street Ministries offers um, food to people who may also have um, issues accessing like a nice meal. So it's kind of like a soup kitchen, but for me it's like a soup kitchen on steroids. So I really love Broad Street Ministries because it allows um, people who are experiencing these issues um, to come to Broad Street Ministries and really sit down and dine in a really, really nice environment. And they're served with respect and, and, and treated appropriately, treated properly. So 
through Broad Street Ministries, you'll be able to um, assist with like running food from like the kitchen to the tables. You'll get to basically interact with some of the people from from the community who attend Broad Street Ministries. And here you have a really good time. They have a really good playlist, really an energetic staff, and they offer so much programs um, to people, specifically a part of the homeless um, population. So I really love Broad Street Ministries as well, too. Um, and they're located not too close to campus. They're located on Broad Street, um, closer to South Philly, but not that far. It's kind of like by the Avenue of the Arts, that area. Any you questions? Question? About? I yeah. do have a question. Yep. Um, this is from Teresa Jackson. Yep. She says she has a question. Why is the civic engagement hours not applicable to the bring the kids to work day? I, I did this last year. She was unable to use civic time. Yeah, very good question. Um, we actually did look into um, using civic engagement time um, for the bring your kids to work day. But um, after reviewing it with the rest of the committee, specifically members from HR as well too, we decided that it wasn't applicable because um, we, would, we are basically encouraging employees to get up and get out and go into the community. So um, if there are community um, opportunities such as like um, the toy wrapping drive and, and opportunities that are more less self-serving to Drexel, we do um, offer civic engagement time. But if it's more internal where um, you're essentially volunteering to like bring your child to work and it's kind of self-serving, it may not be applicable, but we did definitely consider it um, for this past year and we decided that we would like to focus more on encouraging employees to get up and get out and, and work with the nonprofit that's connected to the university. Thank you. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any anything else you want to add? Thank you, uh, I nailed it. <laughs> cool. Um, well, thanks for your questions. If anyone else has any questions, please feel free to keep them coming. Thank you. So yep. So that's Broad Street Ministries. Another very popular site is Our Closet, and Our Closet is a volunteer-driven, community-based organization that provides clothing to vulnerable Philadelphians free of charge by way of, a pop, by, by way of setting up pop-up clothing shops within the city. Specifically, um, we host an Our Closet site at the Zornside Center, um, and we host it almost every Friday, the first Friday of every month, and through this opportunity, um, employees or volunteers have the opportunity of serving as essentially like personal shoppers. So you would basically go to the site um, at Zorn Site. You would help to go through clothing and help to pick out clothing that people, that some of the visitors would be interested in acquiring. Um, so I think it's a very fun opportunity, especially if you love fashion <laughs> and you love meeting and, and greeting and getting to know other people. Um, it's definitely a big hit. Um, it's normally on Fridays between the hours of 9 to 12. And um, I stopped by last week because um, members from our College of Nursing and Health Professions um, decided to stop by and volunteer. And um, the line literally was around the corner. People were lining up, based off what Zornside staff said, people were lining up for clothes at 5 a.m. So it, this just kind of like um, indicates the need for this program to be within our community and also the need for volunteers. Our closet, our closet is, very good, uh, is very good for um, groups as well too. So if you have a group of about like 14 or less, you can feel free to um, sign up for our closet as well too. Any questions? I have a question from Teresa. Yes. Mm -hmm. She said she doesn't have a child, yet she still does it. I understand. Um, and I trust me, I tried to advocate for this as well, too, but then I realized why um, we probably shouldn't be able to use the engage engagement time for it as well. Specifically um, myself, like our department um, volunteers for Bring Your Child to Work Day, and I also don't have children as well, too, but um, as a department, um, I'm volunteering by like teaching students or teaching kids about um, something that's connected to my department. Um, and I also realize that there are other people, specifically when he, with human, within human resources, who um, aren't volunteering, but it's their job to support the program. So there's kind of like conflict of interest. Um, so for that reason, we did not essentially approve that. Um, but I definitely will be willing to take all of your feedback back to the committee and see if I can advocate for it as well, too. Um, perhaps not to make up something on the spot, but perhaps maybe for the next Bring Your Child to Work Day, we can incorporate um, a service opportunity where we're working with a local nonprofit to 
maybe pack backpacks or something like that. Um, I can see if we perhaps maybe expand the program to do that. We can use um, the hours specifically connected to working with that nonprofit towards community service because it's not essentially a self-serving initiative, if that makes sense. And I'd be happy to meet with you, Teresa, or speak with you in person or offline to learn more about how um, we can use our time towards this. But I would encourage you to use all of your 16 hours towards some of the other opportunities that are currently available um, on Career Pathway. Yep. Yes, Kevin. I have a question or just for some clarity. So if we get the 16 hours, mm -hmm. um, in what increments can I use those? Do I need to do a whole eight hour day or can you use one hour at a time? Yeah, you don't have to do a whole eight hour day. Um, from my understanding, you can use it um, usually, ideally in increments of like two or three. Uh -huh. um, for me, I don't necessarily advertise volunteer opportunities that are like only an hour long <laughs> because I don't think it's as worthwhile. Um, but I'm pretty sure that if someone would be interested in volunteering an hour a week for 16 weeks, it's something that I should be able to set up um, on Career Pathway as well. But ideally, most of the opportunities um, run, run anywhere from like three to four hours. And sometimes they do run from two to three hours. Any other questions? Yeah, you're yep. So I have a volunteer activity I'm currently involved with. Okay. And I would love to be able to get it approved to use my leave for that or mm -hmm. get it on this list. Mm -hmm. Is there a process for doing that? Yes, um, there isn't a formal process at the moment um, but for individual employees, but we do encourage employees to get out and volunteer as, as a group. Um, in my next slide, I'll get to it. So I am going to touch on that topic in, in a few, okay. but. Um, in one of my slides, I noted that um, we are in the process of adding additional community um, sites to Dragon Volunteers, but we're primarily trying to get groups of volunteers to go out and, and volunteer together. So if you're able to rally like a group of like um, four other employees, so that's a group of five or more, you can send me information on your volunteer site, then I can see if they if it fits the criteria of Dragon Volunteers. So it would only mm -hmm. be if I were bringing at least four other people yes. with me to yep. volunteer? Exactly, okay. and we, when we created that to mm -hmm. um, promote team building and to also ensure that um, we're, we have the opportunity of vetting all of the sites. Um, an example, um, if all 5,000 employees, all full-time all all full employees, which are 5,000, decided that they wanted to um, have a volunteer opportunity added, that would be a lot of opportunities. Um, so we're trying to see like how to get more groups involved and to promote more team building and maybe at a later time we'll be able to add um, sites specifically for one-on-one -on -one individuals, but currently we don't have the capacity to do that at the moment, but it is something that we're thinking about. Okay. But yeah, I would definitely encourage you to send me an email to let me know about the site and see if you can get four other employees to come with you as well too. Yep. Yep, what's the name of the nonprofit or the organization? The Philadelphia Immigration and Citizenship Coalition. Okay. I help register newly naturalized U.S. citizens to vote. Yeah, um, we actually have a group um, from EMSS who volunteered there recently. Um, I think it was a group of oh. five. Yes. Yeah. Through this? Yes, through Dragon Volunteers. Oh, so it's an approved opportunity? Yes, it was approved because of, yeah, a group of five um, okay. volunteered there, and I, I didn't even know about the organization. So when um, people or like Dragon volunteer leaders um, want to sign up a group, it also gives us an opportunity to learn more about some of the community partners that we don't even know about. Okay. Yeah, but um, I cannot remember the name of the employee um, that sent me information on the group, but he told me that he had a group of five who was interested in and volunteering, can it be added? I said, this is a great nonprofit. We love to support it. So and we also want to make sure that we have diversity as it pertains to um, issues that we support. So, so yeah, whenever you get that group together, you can okay. feel free to, um, to send me um, information on, on when you'd like to volunteer as well. So it always too. has to be with a group? Um, ideally, yes. Yep, yep, yep. So if it's not a, a um, nonprofit that's like listed on the Dragon Volunteer site or um, on Career Pathway, you would have to get a group together okay. to do that. That's all. We're just trying to push more employees to volunteer together as a group. So hopefully that process will work, and it has been working. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Trish? No, no, no. no? Okay. Yep. So another volunteer opportunity is our Joint Site Center. Um, Community dinner. Has anyone ever been to the Thornside Center? Yep. 
Yep. <laughs> Cool. Well, our Torn Site Center is our neighborhood extension center. It's located at 3509 Spring Garden Street. And this center primarily um, aids in supporting the community by offering a plethora of programming. Um, they have a, um, a, a legal clinic. They have a Torn Site, not Torn Site, Drexel Community Wellness Hub that provides services to community members. And another fun thing that they do is that every um, first Tuesday of the month, they offer um, a community dinner. And this allows employees, faculty, staff, students, um, and community members to come together and enjoy a really, really good meal that's prepared by one of our chefs within our um, culinary institute. And it's also prepared by students who participate in a side-by-side -side cooking course. The side-by-side -side cooking course is essentially a course where community members and um, Drexel students have the opportunity of learning side-by-side -side in a course. So um, through this volunteer opportunity, you would be able to um, assist the chef by serving food to um, members of uh, to the visitors of the community dinner. The only caveat is that this opportunity um, is from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and you would only be able to use your civic engagement time from 4 to 5 or 4 to 6, depending on your normal work day. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that um, in order to use your civic engagement time, it has to be an opportunity that falls within the traditional work day. So if it's like Monday to Friday and your normal hours are like 9 to 6, you'd be able to use your volunteer time for an opportunity within your traditional work day. Um, unfortunately, you would not be able to use your um, volunteer or civic engagement time for an opportunity that falls outside of your normal work day or on the weekend. So that's the other part of that. So yeah, so definitely I would encourage everyone to, even if you don't volunteer with the community dinner, to stop by. The food is excellent, it's vibrant, there's always something fun going on at the dinner, and we usually have anywhere from 200 um, community members or 200 um, visitors that attend, and it's always a really fun time, and it allows you to also see firsthand what's going on within our community and the role that Drexel plays in supporting and working alongside our community. Yeah, I've done the dinner many times. Yeah, did you enjoy it? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a, a, definitely a lot of fun. It's always vibrant, and the food mm -hmm. is always pretty good, too. Any questions? Okay. And then last but not least, we currently have a, um, we're partnering with Alumni Relations, um, who is hosting a turkey drive. And basically, the Turkey Drive um, is an opportunity where alum, Drexel alum and um, employees and community members have the opportunity to um, deliver turkey to people within our community um, who may not have turkey or may want to eat a turkey. So this drive is actually going to occur on December 14th, and it's on Career Pathway, so I definitely encourage everyone to volunteer or to sign up to volunteer. I believe the hours are 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on December 14th, so you can feel free to check out career pathway if you have any other questions. Some of our additional volunteer sites that I did not mention is um, Full Abundance, Cradles to Crayon, um, I did mention Broad Street Ministries, and Rebuilding to Together Philadelphia. Some of the other sites are also mentioned on our Drive and Volunteer page and on Career Pathway. So this slide clearly says, where can I find additional opportunities? So, Additional opportunities, as I mentioned, is on Career Pathway, and um, and it's also on our Drive Your Volunteer site. If you're interested, as I mentioned before, in volunteering as a group at a nonprofit that's not listed on Career Pathway, or it's also not listed on our website, you can feel free to email Dragon Volunteers at Drexel.edu. Email those to me, and I'll be able to consider it um, to see if it will be able to be a site that you guys can use your civic engagement time to work. Any questions, comments, feedback? No? Well, thank you so much for your time. Are there any questions on your end, Trish? Yes, for your contact information. I will send them to the end. Yeah. Yep, and yep, so I can be reached. Yeah, I can be reached at jj96 at drexel.edu. My office is located at 3210 Cherry Street if you're interested in scheduling an in person meeting. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm also on tour, so um, a lot of times um, different department heads or supervisors um, or employees like request for me to come to their staff meetings to talk a little bit more about the Dragon Volunteer Program and some of the um, new initiatives or um, opportunities that we offer. So 
If you'd like for me to stop by, I'd be really happy to share this information with your team or also sit down with your team and find out about um, various areas that they would be interested in volunteering with. And then I can essentially play matchmaker and connect you to a nonprofit that um, focuses on the areas of interest. Yep. Can I just make a comment? So yeah. when you volunteer, do you want to talk about how you have to go into career pathways? So that you're a supervisor? Yes. Says it? Do you want to explain that? Yes, process? definitely. Okay. Yep. So the reason why um, you can only volunteer at initiatives that are listed on Career Pathway is because um, per policy, it's very important for your supervisors to approve you to use this time. So God forbid I would hate for it to happen where an employee goes to volunteer and their supervisor may not be aware of it. So the reason why we have all of these opportunities on Career Pathway is for you to be able to go in, you log into Career, career Pathway, um, and maybe I could also pull that up. You're getting great presentation comments, just so you know. Oh, thank you. questions. Let's see. I'll just walk you through it. I mean, are they able to see this as well? Yes, they're, they're viewing it as well. Great, great, great. Thanks, Trish. I forgot. Mm -hmm. That's a really big part. I forgot to mention it. <laughs> I just know because when people, the time sheets are there. Exactly. Yep. All right. So what I did, never. <laughs> I just signed into Drexel 1. So this is um, basically how you would be able to access some of the opportunities available on Career Pathway. So you would sign on to Drexel 1, you would click Employee, Employee tab, you would scroll down and click Career Pathway, and my screen may look a little bit different from your screen, um, but you would be able to click Learning, and then you click um, Events Calendar, and then you'll be able to see some of the current volunteer opportunities that we have <coughs> on Career Pathway. So, for example, today is not the first. Today is the sixth. So if I wanted to volunteer at MANA tomorrow, um, I would be able to click drag and volunteer at MANA. And then I would be able to request. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it because I'm an administrator. Okay. So, But ideally, you would be able to mm -hmm. click. Um, There's a request button. Yeah, a request button um, where you'd be able to request the training. Similar to how they signed up to attend here. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So when you click the request button, an, an email is automa automatically generated and sent to your supervisor, and it says, um, you know, Kathy Choi <laughs> is um, interested in volunteer in signing up to volunteer um, at MANA on December seventh between the hours of X of like eight and twelve um, p.m. So she, um, her supervisor would get that email, then her supervisor would have to go into the email and click approve. Once that's approved, um, you get all these generated emails that says, great, you're signed up to volunteer, remember to you know, dress casually, remember to smile, remember to have fun and all of that other good stuff. And then you go and volunteer, then once I confirm that you volunteered um, with MANA, I would be able to go in and take attendance, and then once I take attendance, I guess payroll gets a notification stating that, or human resources and payroll is notified that you did your service and that you can actually use your civic engagement time towards that. Um, another thing that I would like to note is that in order to use your civic engagement time, you would have to enter it onto your timesheet. I know it sounds like, of course, uh, but some people <laughs> may forget to do that. So when you go on to Drexel 1, you just click your timesheet and then you'll be able to see um, civic engagement time. Um, and you'll be able to input your hours um, on your timesheet, and then it would be like approved. Does that make sense? I'll also pull up this info on our website um, because it shows you the steps that you would have to take to sign up as well, too. This is our group from IA. They were one of the first groups to volunteer, actually. <laughs> they volunteered at the community <coughs> dinner. Okay, so you would click the employees tab either on the left or right here. And then it just um, shows you the steps that you would have to take to sign up. So yeah, you sign up for Dragon Volunteer Opportunities and you click XYZ. Sounds good? Cool. Yeah. Then another thing to note um, is that if you're um, volunteering like with a group and it's not on Career Pathway because I don't know about it, you would just have to send me an email stating, hi, Janiel, um, a group of five are volunteering at XYZ on this date. 
can you add us a career pathway? Then I would go in and add us a career pathway, and then your group would have to register in order to use recent engagement time. But if you're an individual, you can feel free to visit uh, Career Pathway, and it has like a, like a list of um, some of our current volunteer opportunities that we offer. Um, this month, a lot of nonprofits and departments are hosting <laughs> toy wrapping <laughs> parties. Um, so that should be available on Career Pathway at the end of this week. I know specifically um, the Dornsife Center is going to host um, a toy wrapping party with Mantua Civic Association and MCIC, which, was a, which is one of our local um, community partners. And they're always looking for volunteers to help um, to wrap toys around this time of year because um, it's literally like Santa's workshop. <laughs> like you see like all these etch a sketchers and um, Fisher Price toys, like, and it's like literally lined up like against the wall. So we definitely would like to recruit some elves to support that as well. Um, another volunteer opportunity um, that's connected to Soy, soy Wrapping Drive will, that will be posted is um, the, um, as you know, President Fry um, hosts an annual toy drive. So they're supposed to be having a toy, toy drive wrapping party. I believe it's next week as well, too, in main building from, I think it's an hour and a half or two hours. So that will be on there as well, too. And then Salvation Army, which is another one of our biggest partners, they're hosting a toy um, wrapping drive as well to um, the week of, I'll pull it up, December 18th to the 22nd. So, yeah. Toy wrapping at Drexel is this Thursday and Friday. Yes. From 11 to 1. Yes, 11 to 1. So, yes. So, um, you'll be able to sign up on Career Pathway for that opportunity. Um, and you'll be able to sign up to support the Toy Scythe Toy Wrapping Drive or Salvation Army as well, too. And the Salvation Army initiative is on Career Pathway. So, yeah, a lot of gifts. A lot of gifts to get out to the kids. <laughs> Any questions? I do have another one. It says, uh, this is from Teresa. She says, volunteering is doing work hours, but how does this work if the time is 10 to 2 and your start and end time is 8 to 5? Yes, I mean, you can allow for travel time. Um, I guess it depends. Um, usually employees um, only, if you're supposed to get to your site for 10 um, and your site is like 10 or 15 minutes away, I don't believe that there's a way to log it um, as a part of your time. But if that is an issue, I can see how I can include um, travel time into that. But for the most part, yeah, most of our initiatives or most of our um, community partners are only about like 10 or 15 minutes away. So it's kind of like similar to building in time that you would normally build in to go to a meeting. Like, if, for example, today's event, um, you maybe had to travel 10 or 15 minutes. So that's kind of how we viewed it, but I haven't had any issues with that. But I definitely refer to Kevin and HR to see. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just to be clear and upfront with your manager, mm -hmm. um, they're obviously aware that you're going to be out for those four hours. Mm -hmm. um, and there would be an expectation that you went back at 201 if they know where you were. So it wouldn't be an issue. It would just be clearly communicating that to your ma manager. They know where you're going to be and that mm -hmm. you're returning afterwards. So. Yeah, and I mean, the worst case scenario, I'm also very hands-on with this project. It's my baby. So if there is an issue where uh, your supervisor, not that I can do anything, but if there's an issue where your supervisor says, you know what, you're supposed to volunteer at 10, and I need you in the office, um, at, uh, until 10, I can definitely correspond with our community partner and see if they can allow you to show up perhaps 10 or 15 minutes late. Um, I hope that that will be the case because a lot of times our community partners like rely on our employees to, or volunteers to show up on time. So um, if that's the case, I can connect you to another site that's a little bit more flexible with time, such as like Salvation Army. Um, or speak with your supervisor to see if there's something that we can do to support you going to volunteer at your location of choice. Lisa, thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a new employee. Mm -hmm. at, uh, Welcome so, to Drexel. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I start on the October. So do I already have the, the 16 hours volunteer time? I believe so. I think so too. Yes. yes. I believe you do. I know initially the policy was created um, to state that um, you can, you have to be at Drexel for a year, but I believe we took that out. We did change that. Yes. <laughs> yes, because we want our new employees to be involved in what we're doing and, you know, to be able to get out and 
see the world. So, so yes, I believe you should be able to, to see that. In order to check that, you can go to employee and click your time reporting and leave balances and see um, if your civic engagement tab is, is up. If it's not, just send me an email and I'll correspond with payroll to see what's going on. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. As I said, you can feel free to email me, jj96 at Drexel, or, um, oops, that's not it. Stop by my office, set up a time for me to come and talk to your team. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks again for your time and, and, and all of your energy and questions. I really enjoyed it, and I look forward to meeting some of you in person and seeing some of you at our volunteer sites. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.